What's up, everybody? It's Alex from Heavy New York. We are back at the Gramercy Theater today, and today we are here with the one and only Acacia Strain. Thank you, Vincent, for being here. I'm not the whole band. I'm just Vincent. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm just Vincent, me. <laughs> it's great to have you here, man. Uh, you're performing Continent in its entirety. Yeah, that's what I heard. Awesome. So um, what I was curious about performing an older record in its entirety, being that you recorded so many records after that record do you like look back at your older material with a different perspective than when you first recorded it uh yeah especially now 10 years later uh i we're playing some of the songs and i realized how what did i what were these songs even about i have no idea uh i don't know what i was even thinking when i was writing the lyrics so yeah i mean 10 years is a long time so you go back and you relive all these songs that seem kind of antiquated to you but they're part of somebody's life so that's why we wanted to do the 10 year thing yeah and now looking back at that um you know i was kind of debating on asking this but when you look back at that record and compare it to grave bloom like your latest record mm -hmm. do you like say oh my god we evolved so much that's a different version of the band i mean kevin and i are the only members on that record so i'd say we didn't just evolve we um, trade it up, you know, because there's different members, so uh, it's a different version of the same band. Yeah. I'd say. Do you, would you say that um, maybe having newer members play on this record maybe brings something new to the table when playing them live? No, because they try and keep everything uh, true to form. Uh, people expect to the songs to sound a certain way live, and we try and make them sound as much like the recording as possible. So we don't really do anything too crazy that would be, uh, that would take away the originality of everything that was, uh, when it was put to tape. Okay, interesting. Now what I was curious about for you being a vocalist, and I always love asking singers this, because as somebody who's followed your music, I think your lyrics are real interesting. Do you need <laughs> to hear music in order to come up with lyrics, or has there ever been a time where like, a lyrical concept determine the outcome of the music the lyrics are always written first really yeah always I write lyrics years ahead of time um, and I piece them together when I hear the song I guess but the lyrics are always done way before the music is even written always I mean I'm I'm always writing I don't write to the music I just write to my brain my brain just spits out words on paper uh, random times That's awesome. I don't ever sit down and I'm like I'm gonna write lyrics today they just come out uh, when I'm trying to fall asleep or the most inopportune times when I'm taking a shower or driving a car when you can't really write stuff down well it's cool that so it's fair to say that the lyrics do come very organically it's yeah. nothing's ever forced sure I mean sometimes you gotta sometimes in the studio lyric sounds weird so you gotta kind of rearrange it or rewrite it or scratch it all together but for the most part yeah it's all organic awesome now on as a lot of people know you you know you have your other project uh cock punch and um, mm. you've collaborated with other artists such as a day to remember and Whitechapel. Mm -hmm. so when you are working on another project outside of the acacia strain like a day to remember or Whitechapel, for example like do they want you to bring in your own vocal style to their music or have you ever kind of like had to adjust your vocal style depending on who you work no with? they ask when, when someone asks to do, you to do guest vocals on a record, they don't want you to change. They're asking you because they want your specific sound. And uh, that's all I can do, you know? So um, if I get asked to do guest vocals on a record, I'm just myself. And if they want me to do something different, I say, why do you want me here in the first place? Mm -hmm. You know? Um, it's not really a collaboration. They just ask me to sing a line or two and I do it. And that's it. Yeah really interesting and I mean how different of like a mind frame are you when playing with the Acacia Strain versus Cock Punch um Cock Punch is a joke so I mean Acacia Strain is kind of a joke too but um Cock Punch is never to be taken seriously and uh the past like five or six shows we've been booked we canceled so I don't even know if Cock Punch is a band anymore oh really yeah we haven't played a show in years so well, it's just a fun thing that I used to do my yeah. friends well i mean i'd imagine that like because 
if if you have like a joke band, it maybe allows you to visit other projects that are more. I mean, serious. yeah, Cock Punch plays in basements in front of six people, so <laughs> that's how different it is. Yeah, well, at least you have a different vibe, right? I guess, yeah. Yeah. Now, the last time I saw you guys play was actually on the uh, Jungle Rot and Dying Fetus and Black Crown Initiate Tour okay. back in 2016, sure. May 1st. And now you're playing with After the Burial tonight, which I would say has maybe a different type of following. Sure. Then, so do you notice maybe like a different vibe in the audience or maybe Always. a different reaction? Every tour is a different vibe. There's never, no, no tour has a similar vibe. Every tour is different. It's a different time of year. It's a different time frame like different people have different things going on all the time and uh dying fetus fans don't necessarily like after the burial and after the burial fans don't necessarily give a shit about dying fetus and neither fans could care less about us so um it really depends on the day of the week the hour it's everything is very circumstantial like there's no there's no predictability in any tour ever like you can't you can't determine this is going to be great um this is going to have this a kind of fan like it's always different you never know what you're gonna see you know yeah well it's interesting that you put it that way and also i mean you're playing in new york city today like mm -hmm. some bands like try to book their show so it's like on a friday and not like a tuesday where like yeah. by the encore it was like hey come on i gotta work tomorrow yeah yeah i mean tomorrow we're playing in toronto and it's it's thanksgiving in canada so i don't even know what to expect i don't know if anybody's gonna come or you know you never know Carve up a turkey on stage. Exactly. Sure metal. I would love to. Yeah. And uh, one final question I wanted to ask you is being that you got uh, Acacia Strain formed in Massachusetts, which, uh, you know, I mean, that's home to so many bands with Kill Switch Engage, yep. All That Remains, Shadows Fall, Unearth, Diecast, you name it. Were you one of the bands? I, I would say that you do have similarities to that sort of scene. Did you guys kind of cut your teeth with Unearth and all of those guys? Or did you? were you a band that kind of had to go outside your state lines in order to get I mean no whenever we were we were a local band just like every other band and we opened for Converge and we opened for Unearth and you know we opened for Killswitch and, and stuff like that all the time um, we had to sell tickets we had to do all the normal stuff that local bands had to do and um, the important thing is that you get comfortable playing your hometown first before you go anywhere um, if you can't if you can't generate a fan base in your own hometown and your own state, you have no purpose going out elsewhere. You know, if you can't get your own family <laughs> to love you, you shouldn't have another family. Um, so that's, so we all we started in mass and we'll always go back you know yeah well it's interesting that you say that because i've asked a couple of bands like how it was in their scene in their hometown and they said you know you can't they don't even bother playing in their hometown there may not be a metal scene there or there may not be much band so they even if there's not a hometown like you can't it's not like somebody from dubuque montana is dubuque montana a city mm -hmm. um it's not like somebody from there is going to be a scene but there's going to be a close scene you know, say, say you're from, I don't know, Bloomington, Illinois, your hometown will be Chicago. You know, we're from Springfield, Mass, and there was a scene back then, but now it's, I don't know, Worcester is the place. Like we play, when we play Massachusetts, we play Worcester. That's our hometown now. So your hometown is, isn't necessarily where you're exactly where you're from, but it's the closest scene to you. You know, okay. it's not, it's not, um, it's not specific. It's yeah. just, it's very broad. Yeah. I've, I've heard that reference before. Like, you know, if you were a death metal band that started in like Miami, but you were a part of the Tampa Florida. Sure. Yeah. If you're death scene. metal, death metal band from Miami, I mean, it's hard to get down to Miami. It's like a, it's like a 12 hour drive as soon as you get into Florida. So your hometown would be like Fort Lauderdale or yeah, like you said, Tampa, which isn't close, but it's still like, that's where the scene is. So that's where you go. Yeah, so it's fair to say that there is a scene everywhere. It may not be your home, but it will be the home. Right, town. yeah. Okay, awesome. So before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time. Of course. I know it's sorry to talk to you during vocal rest. Or, vocal rest time. Yeah, but, um, you know, Grave Bloom is going to be hitting the two-year mark soon. Shit. Um, yeah, and uh, can we just be expecting anything new from the Acacia Strain within the next couple of years? In terms Always of expect something new. Always. That way, if we don't put out anything new, you're very disappointed. 
you know, I've had a couple of bands give me that answer before. Normally, like a week after I do this interview, they like announce, like they, they yeah. post a picture of themselves in the studio. Well, I guess we have to announce something soon then. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But Vincent, thank you so much hey, for thanks. your time. Everybody, we are here with Vincent of the Acacia Strain. Be sure to pick up Grave Bloom if you haven't already and Better, catch him on bitch. their tour with After the Burial playing Continent in its entirety. We'll see you next time on Heavy New York, everybody.